Welcome to our uh, Religious Ed podcast for uh, St. Babel Religious Ed program. And of course, we're looking at Christmas time now. Uh, and uh, uh, it's been a while since I've been able to do a podcast, and I appreciate your patience with the, uh, uh, the nature of this. Um, I'm here with Paul Barrett. And Paul, uh, once again, we follow this format that Paul can ask me any question he wants about religion or about faith uh, and so on. And uh, I don't know the questions to start with because I think we have to get used to the situation where uh, any question is open and we we have to be able to give a reason for our hope. So, um, any thoughts about that? Yeah, it's all right. Okay. What's your, what's the question? Okay, so I know some people might ask, I need to forgive someone. How do you ask Jesus to help you? Okay. Forgiveness uh, is a big issue. It's a, and... Uh, how do you ask Jesus to help you with forgiveness? This is uh, uh, this come this really um, this is where the rubber meets the road for uh, forgiveness uh, for for Christianity, because as you know, the petition in the Our Father said, "Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those." who trespass against us. So our relationship with God is very much tied to our willingness to enter into forgiveness. And uh, so, uh, and, um, so, and it's also the case that forgiveness does not mean that you pretend that there was no wrongdoing, okay? That's, that's a common misperception. Uh, the best way I heard that described is by an archbishop in Africa that made peace in the war zone in northern Uganda, okay. Archbishop Odama. And what he says about forgiveness is very helpful here. He says, you don't forgive and forget. You forgive and remember. Now that, uh, that's a great challenge because some people think that because uh, they can just put the wrongdoing out of their mind that they've forgiven. But forgiven, remember, means that you learn the lesson of the wrongdoing and you become capable by faith of absorbing the pain of the wrongdoing and not spreading it around. Mm. See? Yeah. So this is, and this comes with uh, practice. The, uh, the practice of forgiveness, it's not like uh, we can uh, uh, become really good at it all at once. But what we can do is make a decision in our will to will the good toward the person who has done us wrong and uh, allow the healing to take place in our emotions where we've been hurt. And the only way you, we can do that is by constantly, in my experience, constantly bringing the hurt back to Jesus and saying, all right, Lord, here I am hurting again because of this wrongdoing that this person did to me. And acknowledging that, not, not pretending it's not there, but acknowledging the memory, but trusting in the Lord over time to actually heal the memory. And in the meantime, while the memory is being healed, 
you still are able, because of the grace of God and the power of His love, to keep willing the good toward the person that did you wrong. And yeah, and it's not easy, but it's very worthwhile to enter into relationships that way. Um, I recently had a friend who was very, very wronged by someone. Just, you know, um, not to go into grave detail, but it had to do with business and money and the way money was misused and uh, the way uh, people were dishonored with power and money. This happens all the time in our culture. People get tempted to uh, play games with money uh, in our culture. And this is one of those situations. And what the person told me is very interesting because they had been really deeply hurt. And they were sharing their hurt with me. They're sharing their struggle. And um, they said to me, I went to confession and I, uh, I confessed my sins and I confessed my struggle with this issue. And when I left confession, I was still hurting from what the person had done to me, but I was no longer angry. Wow. And this really is important. See, what happens, uh, turning to Jesus, you asked me, how do we turn uh, to Jesus to deal with forgiveness? Well, we have a great sacrament of reconciliation. And in that sacrament, what happens is the church has given the, the commission, the uh, calling to the priest and the bishops to minister reconciliation to the people of God. And so if you're having trouble forgiving someone, I say run to confession. Turn it over to the Lord in the sacrament and ask help. And the Lord will help you let go of the anger and uh, at least some of the anger and over time all of it because Jesus gave this power to the bishops and the priests of hearing confessions and giving people the grace to, to move on through their life and that Holy Spirit gr grace that was given when Jesus uh, rose from the dead and he met with the apostles and he said receive the Holy Spirit you whose sins uh, uh, I'm sorry whose sins you forgive they will be forgiven and whose sins you retain they will be retained so here Jesus gives the apostles and after them the bishops and those ordained to the holy priesthood the grace, the gift, to spread this gift of reconciliation around. Mm -hmm. And uh, that can give the Christian the power of the Lord to uh, endure what they need to endure to forgive serious wrongdoing. There's another point about Forgiveness. Forgiveness doesn't mean that we uh, expose ourselves unnecessarily to the abuse of other people. Okay? That's not what forgiveness is for. Sometimes, along with forgiveness, comes the act of staying away from the wrongdoer. Not, not because you want to take revenge on them, but rather because at times we need to protect ourselves from the kind of wrong that 
certain wrongdoers do. And that's not wrong, okay? But you can still forgive, even if you're in a situation where uh, uh, you have to stay away from the person that has uh, delivered a harsh blow to you, see? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, anyway, it's interesting you bring up the issue of uh, uh, how can we get the power of the Lord to forgive. Uh, and I have seen many times where people have been strengthened by their own choice to repent of their own sins. And then they get the power to forgive others through that. Mm -hmm. It's really amazing. See, because I think that often when we get angry at others who are sinning against us, we're also angry at ourselves at times <laughs> for doing the same things. Mm -hmm. And so we're freed as when we're freed from our own sin, uh, it's easier to forgive the sins of others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it works like that. Um, any other what, clarifications on that? I mean... That was very clear. Okay, okay. Um, well, you were talking about the, the wound of the sin? Yes. What would you call the healed wound? Ooh, what is the healed wound of a sin? Okay, they, the fathers of the church had a technical term for it. It's called compunction, okay? okay? And in the imitation of Christ, it says, I would rather have compunction for my sins than know the definition of the word compunction. It's a kind of a... A funny play when you're reading the imitation of Christ it says that okay but I'm going to give you a definition of compunction because it's very interesting mm -hmm. compunction was originally a medical term and what it means is the pain of a wound which is healing so there are certain wounds um, like and certain diseases that don't heal okay and, and, you know, and they end up in uh, very serious illness or death, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But then there's a lot of wounds we suffer that eventually heal. Well, compunction means the pain of a wound which is healing. And what we're supposed to experience is this uh, uh, sense that it's almost a sense of relief or joy as we experience the burning love of God cauterizing our sins, as it were. Okay. You know, cauterizing, you know, mean, means, you know, to take a, uh, you know, a, a, a hot this brand and, and touch a wound so that the wound stops bleeding, right? That's mm -hmm. cauterizing. Uh, yeah. So if, it, it's, it, and again, the medical point is well taken. Um, in fact, uh, this, is, this is really a very important uh, point that you can ask the Lord to help you you, you, you share the wounds that are, you know, there's wounds caused by my own stupidity. There's wounds caused by my direct sin when I do something selfish on purpose. That's a definition of sin I like to use with children. What is sin? Well, it's doing something that's just centered around you, self-centered, on purpose. That's an... Uh, uh, that's a helpful working definition. But I can suffer because I'm stupid. I can suffer because I'm selfish. I can suffer because I'm selfish on purpose. 
but and I can suffer because somebody else did something really wrong to me. Okay? It doesn't matter. God can come in and give me the give grace of experiencing the healing of those wounds. And when it has to do with the healing of sin, we call it compunction. Okay. Is that is that like uh, help you see? I, I I mean that's a very that's a very technical uh, idea, uh, but I think it works. Yeah. Does it work? Yeah. Can uh, could you uh, explain that to somebody your own age? You think? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so we've talked a lot tonight, today about reconciliation and the need for healing, uh, the need for Christ's mercy, and the way we can receive it in reconciliation. Uh, I hope that helps people think about uh, coming to confession again. Thank you very much.